and ladies and gentlemen. I stand before this microphone, the only natural fish mimic in the entire universe. There are, of course, other mimics, but none so completely natural as myself. This is no time for tittering. <laughs> I am married, having a wife and two children, and in passing it is interesting to note that they cannot imitate fish at all. <laughs> In appearance, I am rising 63, of medium stature, having a whitish hair, <laughs> a pointed face, glasses, and a fawn moustache. <laughs> <laughs> and, and looking at me, it is difficult to imagine why I have been endowed with this great gift. By great gift, I, of course, refer to my powers of fish mimicry <laughs> and not to my fawn moustache. <laughs> <laughs> I did not discover my great gift until, as you see, late in years. And the method of its discovery is in itself highly entertaining. <laughs> I must insist upon a deathly hush. <laughs> to use the words of one critic after my first recital, it does not seem possible in this day and age that such things can occur. <laughs> Some five years ago, I was out shopping when a errand boy dropped a package upon my suit. <laughs> As is natural under such circumstances, I cried out, inadvertently emitting the call of the goby or sea squirt. And a well-known fishmonger who was passing on a bus got off and said, that voice is a gold mine. My, re <laughs> My reply was... What do you mean? <laughs> and over a cup of tea he told me, Since that day, my life has been one long extravaganza. When I... <coughs> when I... <coughs> when I decided... <laughs> I don't want to have to get ugly. <laughs> when, I, when I decided to allow the world to share my great gift by going on the stage, my friends all said, You must be mad. That life will kill you. My reply was, Well, we will see. <laughs> I will now give you a demonstration of one of my most superhuman feats. I will imitate the call of the red-bellied gudgeon or a blushing fish. This call is so high in the scale as to be completely inaudible to the human eardrum. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> You'll do yourself an injury. <laughs> uh, dogs can hear it, however, as their ear drums are highly sensitive. And it is also audible to a certain lady friend of mine, a uh, Mrs. Phelps, who lives on the Norfolk Broad, and who has been endowed through some caprice of Mother Nature with the ear drums of a elk. <laughs> Silence, I beg of you. I will now give the call of the red-bellied gudgeon or a blushing fish, and although you will hear practically nothing, I advise you to watch the expression on your dog's face. Should you chance to have him or her with you. Are you ready? 
Now, will you be perfectly quiet and watch your dog's faces? Amazing, is it not? <laughs>